the broadleaf trees, otherwise known as deciduous. You guys will have observed lots of these, and I'm just going to use this document as a way of helping you figure out what do you need to look at, what are some terms you can use to describe the shape of trees, the shape of leaves, and all that kind of thing. I won't read everything in the document, but I will do the introduction. So look at the trees in your area, and you will notice that they are not all the same. By observing the differences, you will be able to identify which species they belong to. However, to correctly identify a tree, you need to look at several parts of the tree. There are three simple steps to follow. Do you know what they are? Read on. To determine which species a tree belongs to, first observe its silhouette. On the junior biologist forms, that's called the form or the shape. This is very important as there are many types. Next, look at the leaves, which occur in different shapes. They are often the best clue to identifying the tree species. Look carefully at the leaf and note its characteristics. For example, the type of leaf, the location on the twig, and the shape and arrangement of the veins, which you see in the middle of the leaf, they're like the vessels going through. Each of these features is very significant and should be carefully examined in order to correctly identify the tree. The fruit of broadleaf trees contains the seeds for reproduction of the species. Finally, observe the bark, the protective covering of the trunk and branches. It is to trees what skin is to humans. The, the fruit and bark are often used to help identify a tree. Okay, so there's lots of different shapes that trees have called silhouettes. So some have branches from the ground up, as in the case of alders, which are considered to be like large bushes. You'll see lots of branches shooting up. Others, like the American elm, are like an umbrella shape with drooping branches. I'm sure you guys have noticed that there's lots of elms here. So they have like a thick trunk and it's almost like they look like an umbrella because of the canopy of the branches. The trembling aspen, sorry, the trembling aspen, which is straighter than the white birch, has ascending branches and an elongated oval shape. So it's like a long oval all the way up the, the trunk is. And again, there are lots of aspen. Both aspen and birch have white bark, so that's one way to notice them. But the aspen is straighter up and there's a whole bunch of them near each other usually. Uh, the red oak is round and has many large strong branches, whereas the sugar maple resembles a large pear with many small branches. Okay, so then there's types of leaves and he gets into a lot of terminology here, which I don't think is really necessary for us, but you do wanna look closely at the leaves. So you'll notice that many trees shed their leaves in autumn. These leaves are called deciduous leaves. Almost all broadleaf trees have deciduous leaves. He shows the exception of the oak tree, which has a type of leaf called a marcescent leaf, which stays on the tree through winter sometimes. And there are oak trees in Calgary. So when you're observing leaves, you should gather a twig, not just a single leaf because many characteristics are influenced by the arrangement of the leaves. And you notice on the junior biologist, it says that word arrangement, right? So you do want to consider this. So the arrangement of leaves on twigs is an essential clue to the identification of trees. A number of tree species can be identified using this observation criterion. Leaves may occur in pairs at one position opposite sides of the stem. So remember I showed a picture on the announcements one day of the opposite and the alternating. So opposite the leaves are right opposite each other. And then the red maple has leaves in opposite pairs. That's an example. Uh, when leaves occur at different positions on the stem, they are called alternate leaves or alternating leaves. Um, so look at a twig from an American elm to see how the leaves are alternating. Okay, so then there's the contour of the leaves. We also call this the margin of the leaves, so the outer edge of the leaf. Um, so I'm going to look at exact examples on this one. So smooth edged leaves are smooth contour with no particular projections on the edges. So they're, they would not have little bumps so much, they would be quite smooth. For example, the willow leaves are a perfect example of a smooth, smooth edged leaf. Lobed leaves have a contour that is divided by empty spaces called a sinuses. 
that separate two lobes. So like a maple leaf has almost like lobes, like you could draw three areas that would be groups within the leaf. Um, some leaves have pointed teeth or they have jagged edges that are like toothed edge leaves. So for example, the balsam poplar has toothed edge leaves. So some leaves have two size, sizes of teeth on their contour, large teeth, which themselves contain smaller pointed teeth. These are called double toothed leaves. You'll see the small teeth more clearly with a magnifying glass. So basically you just have to look at the edge of your leaf and try to describe it. For me, I want to um, assess how well you're observing. So how, how much are you noticing and how detailed are you being in your descriptions? It doesn't have to be a lot of words. You just need to be specific about what you see. So what does the edge of the leaf look like? Um, we're not going to talk too much about the arrangement of veins. So we, the arrangement that is on junior biologist is referring to the opposite and alternating the leaves on the branch. Um, and I think we're going to leave it at that unless there's anything else here. Uh, let's talk about the bark for a second. So the bark on trees has two layers. I think we talked about this in the conifers one. So there's an outer layer of dead wood and an inner layer of living tissues. The inner layer is made up of living cells that are continually dividing. The, the inner cells need water to live. Um, okay, so some trees have smooth bark like the red oak. Others like the white ash have rough bark. So I'd like you to say either smooth or rough when you're assessing. You can feel it. You can kind of tell by looking as well. Um, some bark is thin, such as the beech or thick like the white oak, and maybe you can kind of assess that from the feel of it as well. Um, and then there are four major characteristics to consider in observing bark. Some bark sheds in strips or flakes. So on a birch, you can actually pull strips off of it. Uh, so look at the white birch, it sheds in long horizontal strips. Bark can also be scaly as on the white spruce. So bark may also have shallow or deep grooves depending on the species. So you can kind of, if there's like ridges or actual like indentations in the bark, you can try to describe like, is it shallow or deep grooves? Um, so the white ash has straight grooves. Bark can also be covered in cracks as in the white elm. So you got to kind of practice by feeling different types of bark with your eyes closed. That's a good recommendation. And, uh, Touching is a, real, is a really good sense to use here. So the best thing is in your uh, drawing of your whole tree and then your drawing of your leaves and your drawing of your needles, I just want you to use descriptive terms as best you can in the junior biologist. And I'm going to put up a few more resources that will help you with this. Okay, good luck and thanks so much.